stories at this hour as the clock continues to tick and the day for the planned end bad governance nationwide protest draws closer. Human rights lawyer and senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Ebunlu Adeburua, has asked the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, to probe telecoms operators alleging uh, disconnection of subscribers. In a statement, uh, Mr. Adeburua warned telcos should not attempt to sabotage a forthcoming protest against economic hardship in Nigeria by restricting internet access among displeased citizens. Or well, part of a statement reads, for the past few days, some telecom companies have been disconnecting their subscribers for flimsy and untenable reasons. And he goes on to say that from all indications, it will seem that the underlying target of the telecom companies is to limit the reach of their customers in order to restrict access and thus frustrate the protests. Thousands, if not more, of Nigerians have taken to social media uh, to report that uh, their lines have been barred uh, for various reasons. And still on that planned protest, northern governors are calling on the Nigerian youth to desist from that planned nationwide protest, saying they shall channel their energies into constructive dialogue with government and not to allow some disgruntled individuals use them to advance their political agenda in the name of protest. Governor Abdullahi Suley of Nasara and his counterpart from Kaduna State, Mr. Obasani, in uh, their separate appeals called on Nigerians to pray for peace, unity and progress. An appeal to all of you, especially our youth and labor organizations, you know, to shelve the idea of this protest in the Sarawak State. In addition, to appeal to our uh, security agencies, you know, to be to be ready to work with people who, in case anything like that will come up. Let's check on the other side now. One of the arrowheads of the planned end bad governance protests against economic hardship has been speaking on plans ahead of a demonstration in the nation's capital this time. Damilara Adinola, the director of mobilization of Take It Back Movement, a non-governmental organization who was reacting to the FCT minister's uh, yes, some weakest statement on the use of Eagle Square for the protests, says the facility is a public property and the minister of the FCT has no choice than to allow you to demonstrate their displeasure there. He was a guest on our political program, Sunday Politics. The agitation emanated from Twitter and the Take It Back uh, being an organization which has uh, been responsible for organizing several protests in, in this country, pro-human rights protests in this country, and has, uh, you know, consistently called out uh, thoughtless government policies in this country, only felt that, oh, this is uh, why we, you know, started this organization. And we should be here. We should be on ground to give support to Nigerians. How, much, how much have you been able to put together for this, uh, for the organization? How much? Yeah. In terms of uh, monetary support that you have gotten. We are, I'm not aware we have gotten any monetary. We are not doing this for monetary support, so I don't think we should but, be having... But, but people are supporting, isn't it? People are supporting themselves, um, as far as I'm concerned. In fact, very recently, the account of the TIB was arbitrarily blocked. It is also right to say that there are supports from human rights organizations who exist for this purpose, you understand? So trying to, you know, uh, fish out who the organizers are is very material to the condition of the Nigerian people. The truth is that the Eagle Square is a public property. And then um, when I saw the video of uh, the minister, I was, you know, I was amazed because I saw the minister asking us to pay rent, pay security fees. My question to the minister is that, how does the minister expect Nigerian youths, a greater population of Nigerian youths who are impoverished, who are unemployed, who have no jobs to afford the exorbitant amount is requesting for us to so pay? So whatever happens, you will go ahead to we Eagle Square. We are going to be at Eagle Square. But it's always locked, you know, August 1st. With well, security. Of course, we would uh, speak to them if they have the interest of the people, if they really 
you know, uh, have the will to serve us, mm. then they should be willing to provide that venue. For us, security agencies, if they are sincere, should be available. They should be on ground on the day of the of the protest. And if they sense any form of uh, brain uh, violence, they should be there to as one of the question, are, are As one of the leading groups, so you cannot guarantee no that no. this will not go south. The security agencies should be able to guarantee if they are sincere and they want to show, this is an opportunity for them to show their competence. And more divergent opinions are being expressed, this time amongst political leaders as the 2023 Labour Party presidential candidate, Mr. Peter Obi, and uh, the governor of Abia State, Alex Oti, have expressed divergent opinions about the planned nationwide protest a shadow for August across the country. Speaking with channels television during a courtesy visit, at Dr. Alex Otis Country Hall in Vosi Isialangua South Local Government Area, Mr. Obi said the hunger protest was a constitutional right of the citizens, saying the sponsors of the protest is hunger or are hunger, hopelessness amongst the youth. We in the Nigerian constitution. Protest is allowed. All our plead for those who are protesting is to do so within the law and in a civil manner that allows us as a nation to show that we live within the law. You know, everybody knows the things that are difficult. I always say when they talk about sponsors of the pro uh, protest, I say the sponsors are very simple. It's hunger. It's hopelessness among the youths. So we all have to listen to what Nigerians are going through. And I thank our government for doing so. It is critical and important. Okay. Well, what I said to security agencies is that we will do then them ensure that they manage the situation again within the law. You know, we should not try to be overbearing. It should be something that we do within the law. There's nothing wrong. Protest is allowed everywhere globally. And I also say people protest in my house. And it's for us to listen to those who are protesting. Why are they protesting? Engage them. That's what governance is all about. On the flip side, of, in fact, just right next to him, the Abia State Governor, Mr. Alex Oti, while acknowledging that the planned protest is legitimate and the hunger is real, expressed worry that there is no assurance that the proposed protest will be conducted in an orderly manner. Requires that you get approval from the security forces, particularly the police. And somebody should take responsibility for getting that approval. So if you don't have the approval, then it will be against the law for you to go out on the street to, to protest. So my final word is that uh, people should think about the implications of pouring out on the streets, and um, restricting movement of other people, and possibly uh, inflicting harm and more uh, hardship on the people. For people in Abia, my advice is that people should not pour out on the streets. And more on that planned protest, the National Association of Nigerian Students, NAN, says that Nigerian students will not participate in planned protests, saying Vodi will not participate or support any protest that can lead to anarchy and wanton destruction of livelihoods. Arising from its 84th National Senate sitting, the leadership of the student's body noted that they are mindful of the hardship Nigerians are grappling with, but believes violent protests will not solve but add to that burden. Well, in the same vein, security stakeholders in Oyo State have called for peaceful protests across the state, noting that violence and destruction of public property cannot produce any good result. So, while all of those conversations are ongoing, there's still the very present challenge of insecurity. As suspected Boko Haram terrorists have attacked Chakana police station in Konduga local government area of Borno State, killing a police driver and a woman. The terrorists also set ablaze two patrol vehicles belonging to the police and members of civilian joint task force and a motorcycle, even as some arms and ammunitions were carted away by the insurgents. Uh, 
who were on a rampage. Located 35 kilometers along Maiduguri Damatu Road, Jakana has been a pathway for the insurgents for years and has remained so. And staying in that area, well, this time around, we're looking at another area with a population of about 15,000 refugees, displaced persons resettled in Bagat town in Kakao local government area, Slumpornu state in the last five years. And it looks like life is finally returning uh, to the famous fishing and agricultural value chain hub in the Lake Chad Basin. Surrounded by the Lake Chad waters, Bagat town communities in Kokawa and other local government areas along the fringes of Lake Chad have ever continued to grapple with the presence of Boko Haram and ISWAP terrorists and their activities. Uh, more stories now. The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project Serap is asking the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, to account for over 100 billion Naira dirty and bad notes and other large sums of cash awaiting examination which are kept in various branches of the Apex Bank. In a statement issued to the, director of, the Deputy Director of Serap, Mr. Kolawali Oluwadari, uh, criticized the Apex Bank for not providing information about the location of the mentioned amount. He said the group approached the Federal High Court in Lagos seeking an order to compel the CBN to direct and compel uh, the CBN rather to explain the whereabouts of over 100 billion dirty and bad notes kept in various branches of the bank. And there you have it, uh, the People's Democratic Party, which you saw earlier in Edo State, raising concerns over alleged bias by the Edo Police Command in carrying out their duties. The chairman, PDP Edo State Chapter, Anthony Ezegbeni, who spoke about the issues of the party's secretariat and within city of the state capital, said the party is petitioning the Inspector General of Police to look into their allegations. Inside the example of the Edo Police Command, arraigning the media coordinator of a governorship campaign council, Lulu Martins, over comments not as serious as that of the APC chairman, Jared Tenebe, who was not even arrested, says. And outside the country, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant has vowed to hit the enemy hard after rocket fire from Lebanon killed 12 young people in the Israeli annexed Golan Heights and again raised fears that the war in Gaza might just spread. Iran warned Israel any new military adventures in Lebanon could lead to unforeseen consequences. Western powers, including France and Germany, condemned the attack and appealed for calm. The EU called for an independent probe into what Israel's army is calling the deadliest attack on Israeli civilians since the October 7 attack that began the war in Gaza. And sports news quickly. Nigeria's Super Falcons currently sit at the bottom of the group in the Olympics with zero points. After the latest one he lost, this time to Spain in the second match of the Paris Games, making it back-to-back -back defeat for the Super Falcons after losing to Brazil in their opening match. The team made a few changes to their start uh, against Brazil with Assisa Toshola, who made her first appearance at this Olympics, and Esther Okoronko replacing Onyi Echegini and Chiwendui Uzo, respectively. But the reigning world champions displayed dominance in the first half, leaving little room for the Falcons to counter-attack. The Spanish side's attack led to four saves by relentless Gianmarca Nadozi, but a direct free kick from two-time Ballon d'Or winner Alexia Patelis in the 85th minute caught her off guard and earned Spain the winner. Well, looks like they still have a slim chance. We'll see how their next uh, final group game plays out. But 